Welcome. This is Charles McNamara, your virtual instructor. Training is conducted at 9 Metro Tech in Brooklyn, New York. When you get in, you will have to check in with security, present your paperwork, take a ticket, and wait for your number. It's very important that you look at this clock to make sure that you get your information called and go to the next window. You can visit the fire department's webpage to download all of the study materials for various certificates of fitness. These are free of charge to download online. And it's a good idea to become very familiar with the study material for the exam that you are going to take. Now it will be time to study some definitions, which will be very important to know for the exam. Take the time and read through each word and definition. Tools are used to make fastenings to very hard materials such as concrete or steel. Power actuated tools shall only be used and handled by a qualified operator and a certificate of fitness holder. A day box is a small locked metal box used to store ammunition in quantities using a day's work. Drive pin. A special fastener designed to permanently attach one material to another such as wood or concrete or steel. A gang box is a large locked metal box used to store ammunition in large quantities. A power actuated tool is a tool that utilizes expanding gases from a powder load to drive a fastener into its property. Here is a picture of a power actuated tool and its magazine at the bottom. In order to store, handle, and use power loads at a construction site, you must have the required permits and insurance. Permits are required to store or sell 200 or more shells of power actuated magazine strips or cartridges. We'll now talk about the different classes of fire. Class A, B, C, D, and K. Class A is basically trash, wood, and paper. B, flammable liquids. Class C, electric. D, combustible metals. And K, for kitchen. Another acronym you will need to remember for training people is PASS. Pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Portable fire extinguishers must be inspected on a monthly basis, and they are serviced annually. This chart will identify power load by numbers. An easy way to remember this, the lower the number, the lower the power. Never dispose unfired power loads into a trash can. Here are some basic safety in review and some helpful videos to study for your exam. In order to maximize the performance of your Hilti powder actuated tool, it's important that you know how to make a proper fastening. Hilti powder actuated tools make reliable fastenings to concrete, masonry, and steel based materials. While you should always refer to your Hilti product technical guide for complete information, there are a few general guidelines that cover most applications. Typical applications involve concrete in the range of 1500 to 6000 psi and at least 3 inches thick, while steel should be maximum 65000 psi and 3 16 to a half inch thick. 
In order to make a solid fastening, you first need to know what the base material is and the material being fastened to it. Once you know the base material, identifying the material to be fastened will help you to select the right nail length. For the typical concrete base material, a general rule of thumb to remember is one inch for embedment plus the thickness of the material being fastened. For your typical steel base materials, the nail length is generally a half inch for embedment plus the thickness of the material being fastened. Some nails are better suited for fastening to steel versus concrete, and if you ever have questions regarding nail selection, you can always call Hilti's customer service technical support. Now let's take a look at an example. If you're fastening a two by four to concrete, the 2x4 is one and a half inches thick, and the nail needs to go into the concrete one inch. Therefore, you will need a two and a half inch nail. If you're fastening a 2x4 to steel, again, the 2x4 is one and a half inches thick, the nail needs to go into the steel half an inch. Therefore, you will need a two inch nail. This is a good rule of thumb for typical embedment, but depending on your application and the performance you require from your fastening, embedment depth could vary. But you can always refer to your Hilti technical guide for more detailed information. Now that we've selected a proper nail length, it's time to choose a power level or cartridge color. Our most common used cartridge colors are green, which is our lightest, yellow, which is medium, and red, the heavy. We also have blue, black, and brown for more specific applications. Cartridges are available as 27, long or short, 25, or 22 caliber. The tools vary when it comes to cartridge size and color to be used, so check your operator's manual to make sure you're using the correct one in your tool. The harder the base material and the longer the nail, the more power that's needed. Usually green or yellow will provide ample driving power for 90% of applications. If you're unsure about what power cartridge to use, start light and work your way up. Perform a test fire to ensure that you've selected the right color cartridge or power level. It's right when the nail is embedded into the base material properly. So Gentry, let's do a couple test fires. All right, we're going to attach this 2 before 4 to concrete using a 2 and a half inch nail without a pre-mounted steel washer. The 2 before 4 is 1 and a half inches thick and we need 1 inch of embedment for the concrete. Therefore, we're using a 2 and a half inch nail and a yellow cartridge should do the job. Now make sure you read and understand your operator's manual before using your tool. You must always wear safety glasses, hearing protection, and a hard hat. The first, load the nail into the tool. Then insert the cartridge. Now set the power setting on the tool, if applicable. Not every powder tool has one. Now hold the tool firmly, but keep your arm bent. You want to allow the tool to recoil when it's operated. Now compress the tool firmly against the work surface, making sure to keep it perpendicular, and pull the trigger. Now Ryan, that doesn't look quite right. There seems to be too much nail sticking out of the board. Yeah, you're right. This is a classic example of underdriving the nail. We need to up the power to make sure that the nail will go further into the concrete. Do not try and redrive the nail. You should always make a new fastening. Gentry, you want to try? Absolutely. Whoa, I think we gave that one too much power. That's what you call overdrive. Now in both cases, the 2x4 was not securely fastened to the concrete. You want to make sure that the head of the nail is flush or just slightly below the surface of the material being fastened. That's why doing a few test fires is so important. But now that we know where the right power setting is, let's give it one last try. Gentry? It just doesn't get any easier or quicker than that. One of the most common questions in regard to powder actuated systems is how to properly dispose of used or partially used cartridges. Unfired cartridges lying around the job site can be a problem. Not only do they pose a safety risk, but OSHA can issue fines for improper storage or disposal. During the workday, operators and users of powder actuated tools will have to address fired and partially fired cartridges. For safety personnel and inspectors, cartridge containment is extremely important. The key is to have a place to store your cartridges. For unfired cartridges that are going to be used later, make sure you store them in a dry area like a gang box or a storage closet that can be locked. Now this sounds ideal, Gentry, but what about during the day when your tools are in constant use all over the job? And what about the fired cartridges? What do I do with them during the day? 
Well, remember we talked about the importance of cartridge containment. One idea is to have a few five gallon buckets on your work site. Label all the buckets cartridges only and make sure your workers know where they are and of course that they use them. At the end of the day, the buckets can be collected and stored properly. If the cartridges are all completely fired, they can then be disposed of in the regular trash. The challenge is what to do with the unfired cartridges. It might seem simple, but the best approach is to fire them. Absolutely. The reality is that out of the billion or so cartridges sold by Hilti, less than half of 1% are actual misfires. That is, the firing pin hit the cartridge, but it did not go off. Now, the main reason for unfired cartridges is that the cartridge is skipped during the loading or cycling process during use. Correct. With fully automatic tools like the Hilti DX460 or the DX351, cycling the tool is not an issue. Skipping mostly occurs with semi-automatic tools such as the DX35 or DX36 because you have to manually cycle the tool. Okay, so what do you do when you have an unfired cartridge that actually has been hit by a firing pin but did not fire? Well, like I said, shoot it in the tool. Now, if that doesn't resolve the problem, take them to a hazardous waste disposal company. For more information, contact your Hilti account manager or call Hilti customer service. Remember, proper cartridge containment and disposal not only reduces waste, but it helps to ensure safety on your job site. In order to take the test at the fire department, you will need to get a card prior to going from Hilti or Ramsat, which is very easy to do. That covers the basics for the E21. I wish you well. Good luck at your exams.